right, everyone, let's get started. So this month we're working on the Natural Magic Jellyfish. Um, you'll need your pencil and the marker. You'll also need your inks, okay? And I'm just going to give you a crash course on how you can do this, um, but feel free to color it in any way you feel inspired to. Um, the most difficult part is getting into the drawing, um, learning a little bit about how I do the background, and then filling in this is just like coloring a coloring book, okay? So you're going to start with a pencil. We're going to focus on the head of our jellyfish, and we're going to start in the upper left-hand corner with a soft line. I'm going to put two little edges on there and a nice little hill, okay? Then I'm going to do some fluffy frills along the bottom. You can make them big or small, whatever you prefer. Then I'm going to fill in that bottom line with some larger bumps. And I'm going to put some smaller bumps inside those large bumps. Then I'm going to draw some lines and turn them into points. Okay, and at any point, feel free to pause if you need some extra time. Okay, then we're going to put a leaf shape in the top and then just the side of a leaf shape on either side. And then we can fill that negative space in there with a little bit of line work. Now, because this is slightly smaller than the canvas I created the original on, you'll notice that we won't have as much room for detail, um, but it's up to you to decide how much detail you'd like to put inside your jellyfish. So if you feel inspired to add more detail, by all means, go for it. It's not going to change how we paint it. Um, it might take you a little bit longer, but it'll look awesome. Okay, so for our next spot, we're going to draw sort of like an up -down, upside down teardrop shape. And we're going to outline that upside down teardrop shape with another line and then just fill in the inside with some curved lines for fun. Near the top on one side we're going to do some petal shapes. On the other side we'll do some curved lines. Okay, And then we're going to move down here and focus on creating the rest of the tail. We want to use the lines that are already existing in this shape to create the rest. So I'm going to follow this line. I'm going to curve in and out. And I'm going to come here and do the same thing. Okay. Then I'll follow this line here. Curve in like a hook. Curve in like a hook again. Now if you notice, we have a nice thick area here. So I'm going to build off of that and swing in one more time. And then I can go ahead and add these lovely little bumps. They go from one section to the almost to the top of the second section, but we're going to leave a little gap there because we're going to put in a big bump with some petals. Okay? On this side, we're going to draw a curl and then fill that in with some more bumps. We can go ahead here and draw a line, fill that in with some small lines, and I'm going to continue that pattern on through this section here. Okay. Then I'm going to create some larger sections just like that, and I'll fill only some of them in, just to break up these larger areas, keep it interesting to look at. Okay, and that finishes our tail for the most part. I'm just gonna add in a second little frill there. Okay, and like I said, if you wanna add more details, you could. You could add smaller bumps inside of here. And for our tentacles, very, very simple. Uh, start somewhere, do a long line, try to curve the end of that line around like a little hook, and then just follow that line back. Okay, we're gonna do another one here. 
pull all of it back. Follow it back. Um, I'm gonna put another sweeping one in here, like that. Let's put a short curly one here. Make sure that you do a variety of lengths. It just makes it more interesting to look at. And notice I'm trying to fill in space. So I don't want them all lumped together. I want them to spread out. I want you to be able to see a lot of them. So then that way it will be easy to know which one is which, okay? And once you're done that, you're just going to outline it with your marker. And you can use your pencil lines to, sh to decide if you really like where the pencil lines are, or if you don't, you can just adjust them as you fill the things out with your marker. Okay. So there's the head finished and again just to show you you can fill in these little areas too with some extra detail if you like if you're like oh I don't want to draw in those small spaces then don't draw them that's okay we're just making all of this come to life now we'll put in some of these fun swirly lines Continue those lines down the way, making a nice big tail for our beautiful magical jellyfish. Okay, we're going to continue on down to the curling end of our jellyfish tail. Break some of those larger sections up. Just like that. Now drawing your tentacles, you just need to make some decisions on which one comes in front if you have them overlapping. You don't want the lines to run through themselves. So you'll see here, I've stopped. I won't draw through that and I'll come back underneath of it. And then that way it doesn't look like they're cutting into each other or that our jellyfish is a ghost. And it's entirely up to you to decide which ones should go forward and which ones should fall behind. There's not really a right or wrong answer to this. It's all up to you to decide what you think looks best. I'm going to slightly adjust these ones to give each one a little bit more space. But other than that, there you go. Okay. From here, you want to use one of your larger brushes, okay, and you're going to saturate the background with just water, okay, and down. 
Now when working with Bombay inks, you can use them all by themselves, which is going to give you very uh, vibrant and saturated colors. Okay, don't forget to paint in between your jellyfish tentacles. Um, but you can also use ink just like watercolor, and you can water down those bright colors and create lighter variations. Okay. I'm just spreading it out. I'm focusing mostly around the edge of the jellyfish. I am blending out into the negative space a little bit, uh, but not too much because we'll have lots of time to do that. I'm just sort of spreading out anywhere there's pools or puddles, making sure I'm painting in between the tentacles because it's important that we see that there's water in between them. Okay, something like that. So what you're going to do next is you want to grab your inks and it's up to you to choose how you want to apply them. But I'm just going to show you quickly. It doesn't take much. Okay, I'm going to take my small brush and I'm just going to drag this color along the edges. Okay, and you'll notice, look how gnarly my poor brush is. Hopefully you're treating yours better than mine. And if you purchased a box last month, you can use some of your leftover ink to create some variations in color if you like. Okay. There we go. So I'm just filling in these spaces here. Notice as I get more into just dragging the color around, it's getting lighter. You've got some variations in vibrancy and that's okay too. I'm gonna come around here. I'm trying my best not to get into those spaces inside the jellyfish, but it happens sometimes. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come back with just my water, my big brush with just the water, and I'm gonna just scribble around in the background a little bit. Okay. Now if memory serves me right, I gave you two background colors. I think I gave you turquoise and a blue. So it's up to you to use the two colors how you wish. If you think that you would like the blue more as the background instead of turquoise, what I'm using right now is the turquoise, but you can use the blue. And then you can take the, the blue ink okay. and you can splatter. So I'll just show you a nice way to splatter without getting too out of control. You're just going to take a smaller brush or a larger brush, doesn't matter. Dip it in there and you're going to hold your finger out like this and you're just going to tap it. So you're going to use the brush like a hammer. Okay. And you're just going to use your finger is that barrier. Your finger shouldn't be moving. It should just be the brush that moves. And then you can come along and you can break some of this up. So I think this will look good as a larger blob here. I'm gonna spread some of this out a little bit more. And depending on how much water you have on your canvas, you might notice that things start to run. That's okay if you're okay with that. But I'm going to show you what you can do if you don't like how that looks. Okay, so I'm just breaking in some of these, trying to smooth them out, look a little bit. Okay. And I always tell people, I'm not here 
making this beautiful for me. I'm not here making this beautiful for you. I'm really just trying to get across to you the process of how to work with the ink, how to fill in the space, how to use these fun techniques to make something really beautiful for yourself. So please don't expect yours to look like mine. Don't try to make yours look like mine. Make yours look exactly how you want it to look, okay? So I've got a lot of water pooling up here, which is totally fine if you think it looks great. If you don't think it looks very great, you can take a napkin or a rag. Okay, so I'm just going to use one of the studio rags. And you can dab those larger areas. It will take the pigment away. You can always bring the pigment back. Okay, but you can take away some of that. Okay. And if you're like, oh no, I've taken away too much, well, you can always just put it back. Okay, so I kind of like this, but I'd like to see some more splatters. And you'll notice that these splatters will spread out a little differently because there's not as much liquid. Okay. I really love this splatter texture. Okay, so we need to leave it just like this and let it dry. And then we can paint in our beautiful jellyfish. So while you're waiting, make sure you have your other colors ready to go. Okay? Feel free to grab the extra colors you have from last month if you bought last month's box because you can make them even more vibrant. And then we'll paint things in as soon as it's dry. So just take a little pause, take a little break, and we'll be back. So soon. once your canvas is nice and dry on the background, you can go ahead and grab your extra colors, okay? Um, now, I have to apologize because sometimes I just forget what I gave you uh, in your packages. So I'm pretty sure I gave you pink and purple. Um, if you wanna use your leftover colors from If you want to use the leftover colors from your kit last month, by all means, you're welcome to add in some new colors. Okay. But I just want to show you a quick little crash course in filling this in. Don't feel like you have to make yours exactly like mine. Feel free to blend the colors together if you like to make new colors. Feel free to use some white or feel free to use some water to lighten your colors. Okay. So I'm just going to use pink and purple and a little bit of orange. Um, you can also use your yellow, whatever you like. Okay, so I'm just going to start with a little bit of that pink. You can even use some of your background colors if you really want to. Okay, and I'm just going to start by painting in one section at a time. Now with ink, this Bombay ink is helpful because once the ink is dry, it won't bleed, it won't wake up again if you get it wet. So I recommend sometimes, especially if you're working in these small areas, you want to make sure that one area is dry before you move on to the next, or you might get some bleeding, okay? And that just means one color is gonna leak into the other, which won't happen if one section is dry before you start painting another, okay? Uh, Obviously, you might need a little bit of patience to wait for that. So if you don't, that's okay. It just means you have to be extra careful when painting in your jellyfish. Okay. So I am just painting things in intuitively. Okay, I don't really have a plan. If you are approaching this with more of a plan, well, go for it, that's okay. Okay, everyone has a different style. Some people are a little bit um, more rigid in what their vision is, and some people are more relaxed. And either way, it doesn't matter because you're at home and you can take all the time you need. You can try some new things. You can experiment on a different piece of paper and test out colors before you get started. Okay. My only suggestion is try to spread out each color that you use throughout the design because this will pull everything together. So you'll notice I added a lot of pink to the top. I've put some pink in the tentacles and now I'm putting some pink into some of the details within 
the jellyfish. And this will just make your piece look a little bit more cohesive. The color will be more balanced. And it creates an interesting uh, pattern for your eyes to follow and look at because that's what we're hoping for. We don't want your eye to just get stuck in one spot. We want to see that your eye is looking around the entire composition or someone else's eye. Okay, so I'm going to start here with some purple. Now I'm using the purple to fill in uh, some of the tentacles that I imagine are a little bit further away. Okay, or the ones that are behind. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to add in some more of these fun details here. So there's some nice purple. Now I want to fill in a little bit more purple up in here because I feel like there's a big gap. We need some purple in here. So if you feel like your eye or your brain is telling you, you know, I'd like to see this color someplace, listen to that instinct. Everyone has natural instincts when it comes to visuals. Um, so feel free to listen to those. Little bit of that. Now I'm going to mix a little bit of my pink and my purple together. Okay, I'm going to use mostly that magenta. Okay, so it's going to be a more of a deep pink. I'm going to come in and I'll fill in the rest of my tentacles here. And it's not a dramatic change in color, but it is a little bit more interesting than just all magenta. I'm going to come in with that same color and fill that in here. Okay, but notice how I leave the two sections on the outside. That's because I'm going to take just water and watch how nice this is when you blend out with a little bit of just water. It lightens things up. It gives your appearance of a softer color. Okay. But of course, if you don't like the way that looks, don't do it, okay? It's your instincts. You gotta look at it. I might not even get to see yours. So do what you think looks great. I'm gonna just go around this little swirl and just water, spread some of that out. Okay. Now, just to show everyone, um, I know not everyone doing this project has done the June box, but in case you'd like to know what adding a little bit of orange to this will do. Okay, it'll just... And again, orange and pink can be blended together. And if you have been working with some of your inks and you're like, you know, I think I'd like to add a little bit of turquoise, I'm just going to show you what a little bit of that turquoise added in here can do for you. You just want to make sure to put it in places where it's not going to get confused as the background. Okay. And that's kind of why I'm doing this example here to show you some options. You can decide what you like. You can learn through my mistakes. You can learn through my demonstrations. You can decide if you like something or if you really don't like it, that's okay too. I'm just here to help you get through this beautiful project 
to make the most beautiful work of art that you can enjoy at home, okay? So I'm just letting some of this bleed out into some of my other colors, just because it creates really pretty purple. Or you can also use it to deepen some of the purple, okay? So have fun blending colors. I always like to use a piece of paper. I'll do like test run of colors. See if I like what it looks like on paper first before I blend it into my design. So you can do that too. Okay. Until you have a beautiful jellyfish that is your very own. If you decide that you think you'd like to see a little bit more texture in the background, it's a good time to do that now that the first layer is dry. You can always just splatter some more on. If you wanted to paint some more liquid water on there, do that water first and then do this, you can. It will change the way things look, but that's totally okay. Okay. Do what your heart says is the best thing to do for you. Okay. But create something beautiful. Have lots of fun doing it. Blend and experiment with your colors. And save any of the extra stuff that you didn't use while making this painting because you can always use it to make other works of art on your own time or you can save it if you've got the August box coming up and you can use some of those colors to add new colors to our next design. Okay? I hope you had lots of fun. I hope you learned something. And I can't wait to see what you create.